I feel like I had some trouble with this question the first time I did it. Let's let's see. 18th century economist Adam Smith is famed for his metaphor of the invisible hand, which he putatively used to illustrate a robust model of how individuals produce aggregate benefits by pursuing their own economic interests. So it, it's a metaphor and it illustrates something. That's it. Note putatively. As Gavin Kennedy has shown, Smith deploys this metaphor, there it is again, only once in his economic writings, only once, to make a narrow point about the then-dominant economic theory of mercantilism, and it was largely ignored until some 20th century economists eager to secure an intellectual pedigree for their views elevated it as a to a full, fully-fledged paradigm. So, oh my God, there's a lot there, but basically, right, main ideas are repeated ideas, it's ignored. He used it just once. It was narrow. It was ignored. And then at some point it was elevated, right? So let's let's kind of think about that, that aspect as we go into the choices here. So A, although Smith is famed for his metaphor of the invisible hand, so he is, uh, the metaphor was largely ignored, okay, fine, until economists in the 20th century came to realize that the metaphor was a robust model that anticipated their own views. So that, I know what they're doing there. This is what I might call a copy-paste trap. Now, it doesn't mean I'm crossing it out, but how many of you actually use the word robust often in your day-to-day -day life? Probably not many. So you see it in that choice, you see it up here, and you're like, oh, that's a that's a new thing. And, th and there it is. That shiny new object in the passage is right there in that choice. You can't just pick things because they repeat fancy words. It, it might be right, but they also lay this trap a lot where they're just, they know you're kind of attracted to that unusual thing. So whether it's a, a weird adjective or a kind of more scientific noun, um, you got to just be careful that you're not just picking something because it repeats the same little snippets of information. How is that information connected? Right now, I don't really know. I didn't understand this end piece enough on the first reading to know whether this is right. Why did those economists in the 20th century start to pay attention to this? For now, I'm not going to worry about it. I know the first part of choice A is right. Let's see what the other choices bring, and then we'll come back to this if I need to wedge some choices apart. So B, some 20th century economists gave Smith's metaphor of the invisible hand a significance it does not have in Smith's work. Well, it does say he only used it once, so it's not that significant. I get that. That seems okay. But it, never is, it is nevertheless a useful model of how individuals produce aggregate benefits by pursuing their own economic interests. Okay, it does say similar things to that. Okay, but um, is, why did these economists give it the significance? Is it because it was always useful? I, I, I don't know. Again, I'm kind of lost here. Let's look at C. Smith's metaphor of the invisible hand has been interpreted as a model of how individuals acting in their own interests produce aggregate benefits, but it was intended as a subtle critique of the economic theory of mercantilism. Now, notice that's ignoring a, a key idea. Right. We, we were supposed to think about why is this ignored for a long time? Why is this not a very important point? And then yet it comes up later as being the one thing we know about Adam Smith. So where is that kind of like ignore idea? We're supposed to do the main idea. This this seems to just really focus on the economics here, but, but not that, that, that idea was once ignored and now isn't. So this is honestly the first choice I'd be like, nah, doesn't really seem to hit what I think is most important main ideas are repeated ideas. They keep saying how we ignored this idea for a long time, this, this theory or this metaphor. Let's look at D. The reputation of Smith's metaphor of the invisible hand is not due to the importance of the metaphor in Smith's work. True, right? It's not important. It's just one time that they use it. So it's not important uh, in his work, but rather to the promotion of the metaphor by some later economists for their own ends. That's a very strong phrase. Are they doing it for their own kind of selfish reasons, their own ends, their own goals, their own aims? So mm, I got a couple choices I'm considering. The, the part of this passage I understood the least is right here. Let's see if we can make some more sense of it, right? So it was largely ignored until some 20th century economists eager to secure an intellectual pedigree for their views elevated it to a fully fledged paradigm. So they're eager to secure it, uh, an intellectual pedigree for their own views, right? So there is a selfishness in these words. And, and I know that some of them are hard words, but there's definitely this idea of like selfishness. It's for their own intellectual pedigree. That's kind of like their own intellectual reputation, right? How smart we think they are and how smart they claim to be. So um, they're elevating it for their own reasons. Yes, that is true. 
So D is the answer, but let's let's spend a little bit more time on some of these other ones. Um, a, going back to it, right? We said the first half is pretty good, but but the, the second half is where I got confused. They came to realize that the metaphor was a robust model that anticipated their own views. That's just not really what it says. It doesn't say that they're doing it because they believed something and then they found this metaphor that like also supported them, right? Because the whole point is that it's not even about um, – it's not even about what they say it's about, right? It, it, he, it is putatively or supposedly, right? So supposedly kind of like assumed, it is assumed to be used to illustrate a robust model of how individuals produce aggregate benefits, like kind of uh, community benefits um, by pursuing their own economic interests. Note putatively, supposedly, right? So what that part right there is saying is like, we say it's doing the metaphors for this purpose, but it's an assumption or it's not quite true. Um, as Gavin Kennedy has shown, Smith deploys this metaphor only once in his economic writing, so it's not that important, to make a narrow point about the then dominant economic theory of mercantilism. So it wasn't even about um, uh, kind of this capitalist thing, kind of, they don't use that word, but it, it, that's kind of what they're going for. It's, it's not, it wasn't used for the thing people putatively, supposedly say it's for. So later on, oh my gosh, this is so roundabout. But later on, when we get to the end here, we're, we're not going back to A. We are not saying that we realized later that the metaphor was, was actually about something else. It, it was never about anything other than mercantilism. It was just been repurposed by these people for their own selfish reasons, not because Adam Smith was kind of foreseeing the same point that they were making. And that's what A is trying to say, is that Adam Smith and these economists – are using this metaphor in the same way. The passage is saying Adam Smith used it for a different reason than these other people, these modern people are using it. So it's wrong. B, some 20th century economists, okay, we got all that part, but it is nevertheless a useful model of how individuals produce aggregate benefits by pursuing their own economic interests. No, again, the passage says it was not for that reason. It's only now that we say that. It was actually for mercantilism. So it has a completely different usage. So this is actually wrong kind of at the end here for the same reason that A was wrong. So yeah, this is very tough. Um, just to give you some other words here while we're at it, uh, da, 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 there was others. Pedigree is kind of like your yeah your reputation or your upbringing, right? We might think of someone's like their, their, their last name if they're a famous family or something like that. That's like they have certain pedigree, they have certain breeding and certain uh, reputation that kind of comes along with them. Um, and then a fully fledged paradigm, a paradigm would be like almost like an example. Um, something like that is probably the best way to put it. So it's a good way of thinking about economics is kind of what they're saying, even though Adam Smith only used it in this one very narrow way. Very hard question. I do even looking at it again, uh, you know, again, I know the right answer is D, but it it's hard. There's a lot of hard words here. So this, this is not a science passage, and yet it has some of those qualities that we don't like about science passages, which is just a lot of dense, very specific to a topic kind of language, that economic language. So just do the best you can. Um, but these are could remember, this is a hard module, so you got to skip around. And if you look at this and you start going, I don't know what's going on, then just, yeah, pick a random letter and move on to something where you do have a better sense of what the passage is saying.